You're visiting Germany and are stopped by the police who start asking you questions. What do you do now? What are your rights in this situation? And how can you make sure that you don't get yourself into trouble? In this video, I'm going to give you just a few pieces of advice. But first, I am not a lawyer, so this is not legal advice. Also, this video is not going to be helpful to you if you are in a very serious situation. If you've been arrested or are to be questioned as either a suspect or even a witness, then you really need to talk to a lawyer. Now, I don't want to give the impression that the German police are bad. Normally, they are professional and well-trained. It's not like some countries I could mention where you have to be very careful not to get shot. That is very rare in Germany. Let's put this into perspective. In 2019, a total of 15 people were killed by police in Germany. That is approximately 0.00002% of the entire population. In the same year, US police shot dead nearly 1,000 people, which is 0.00003%. In other words, statistically speaking, you are 15 times more likely to be killed by police in the US than in Germany. However, while the German police are generally more professional, they're not perfect. And like every police force in the world, they're made up of human individuals and not all of them are as professional as others. So you don't really need to worry about your safety, but it's still good to know your rights. The general principle is that the police cannot stop you randomly, although there are some exceptions. Normally, they need to have reasonable grounds for suspicion, and they need to tell you exactly what they suspect you of. A very important exception to this rule is the general traffic check. In Germany, police can randomly stop vehicles to check that they are roadworthy and the drivers fit to drive. They can give your vehicle a quick visual inspection and they can also demand to see all the things that you are legally required to have in the vehicle. So a high visibility jacket, a warning triangle and a first aid kit, as well, of course, as your driving license. But without reasonable grounds for suspicion, they cannot search your vehicle and they also cannot force you to take a breathalyzer test or give a urine sample or anything of that nature, at least not without your consent. So let's say you're stopped by police and asked to take a breathalyzer test because they say you look like you might be drunk. Now you can legitimately refuse, but should you? Well, if you do refuse, then the police must consider whether they have reasonable grounds to take you to the police station for a blood test. So the risk to you, obviously, is that you get taken to the police station. The risk to the police is that actually everything's fine, you pass the blood test, there's nothing wrong, and then they've just wasted a lot of time and money. You would probably need to make your own decision on that, but what some police officers do is to demand a urine sample on the spot, which is not just inconvenient, but also massively humiliating for most people. Now, I think in a situation like that, it is worth knowing that you can refuse, and then that would force the police officers to make a decision whether to just let you go or risk taking you in for a blood test. By the way, it used to be that they needed the authorization of a judge for a blood test, but that is now no longer necessary. The second biggest exception to the no random stops rule is if you're in a situation where there is a strong possibility of criminal activity or violence. So you might be at, for example, a demonstration or an airport or a railway station or a place where criminals are known to meet. The exact rules vary from state to state, so I can't be very specific here. But in these situations, the police do have the power to stop and search random people. Anywhere else, they need reasonable grounds for suspicion. Here is a concrete example. It happened a few years ago when I was still living in Berlin, and I just wanted to get from one side of Alexanderplatz to the other. But I was stopped by a police officer who wanted to search my bag. I asked why, and they explained that some politician was giving a speech of some kind, and that therefore 
random stop and search was in effect. If I wanted to walk across the plaza, I had to have my bag searched. Well, I hadn't planned on attending this event, I didn't even know it was on, I didn't want to fight my way through a crowd of people, and I certainly didn't want to listen to some firebrand politician I'd never heard of jabber on about how useless the government is. So I told the officer that I would really rather not be searched, thank you very much, and that I would find a different route, at which point he shrugged and said, fair enough, and it was that easy. All right, so if you are stopped by the police, what are their rights, what are your rights, and what should you do? Well, if you're not actually being arrested, the police don't have too many rights. They can ask whatever questions they want, but the only ones that you have to answer are those to establish your identity. Your name, date of birth, address, and nationality. The police can also demand to see your passport or ID card, and incidentally, you are legally required to possess at least one of those, although you don't normally have to carry it with you. In practice, in most cases, anything you have that will back up your answers ought to be sufficient. A driving license, for example. I once managed it with a bank card. Any other question you can refuse to answer. But of course, if you say nothing at all, the officers are likely to suspect that you have something to hide. On the other hand, if you say too much, you might accidentally incriminate yourself. So, what do you do? First and most importantly, remain calm and polite. Don't give the officers any reason to get annoyed with you. But at the same time, whatever questions you choose to answer, answer them briefly and never give them any information that they didn't ask for. The thing to watch out for if you do encounter some of the um, less professional officers is that they may try to make you say more than you should. For example, if they say something like, um, yeah, we've been having problems with people riding scooters while stoned. Do not say, oh, that's all right, I haven't had a joint all week. The classic, of course, is, do you know why I pulled you over? The only correct answer to that question is no. And that's basically it. The police don't have many rights, but some of them do have a few nasty tricks they can play on you. Be friendly, keep your answers business-like, don't give them any information they didn't ask for, and remember that you always have the right to remain silent. But hey, the chances are that you will never need to use any of the information in this video. If this has all been just a complete waste of your time, then that's actually a good thing. And to make sure that the driver is fit to drive. <coughs> oh. And they can also demand to see all the things that you learn is la. They can give your vehicle a...